So uh, I'm Mike Santi. Um, I'm not going to go into my history too much more because they did a pretty good job. Um, but I was a hockey player for a very long time, and I had a, quite a few head injuries, a lot of concussions. Um, but I just want to say it's an honor to be here, and I'm, I'm very thankful that all of you are here taking an interest in, in a very important issue, as, as was said earlier. Um, and it's amazing that you know, there's so much support here already. Um, figure skating isn't one of those sports you think about uh, when you watch the news. You see football, you see hockey, you see boxing, you know, these, these big sports that are contact sports that get a lot of the attention for concussions. But having been a former figure skater and um, you know, I've spoken with a couple of my dad's students who have dealt with concussions, it's, it's an issue in figure skating as well. So it's great that you guys are all here. Um, my first concussion I ever had, which I guess is not a very cool stat, but it was on a, a failed attempt at a double lutz before a competition. And uh, my athletic trainer, my father, um, very wisely said, all right, go out and do it again. Um, so we've learned a lot um, you know, from then until now. But um, what I do now is, is I try and share my story because um, I had a lot of difficulties personally um, with my concussion recovery. Um, concussions and, and traumatic brain injuries, closed head injuries, are not like other injuries. If you sprain your ankle, your doctor can say, okay, here's your re rehab program, ice, rest, and you can start to strengthen it up with exercises, and you should be ready to go in four to six weeks. Well, as many of you guys know, with concussions, you know, that's not exactly how it is. And um, you can't really put a set timeline on a concussion recovery. There's trends and there's, there's guidelines you can put out there, but it can be, you can't really be sure. I spent 24 months recovering my last concussion. That was two years that it was, <coughs> sorry. It was very difficult for me personally. Um, I went through very deep depression. Uh, I felt cut off and isolated from uh, my teammates, my family. It was all because I wasn't sure. It felt like I was never gonna get better. And progress was slow, and when progress would happen, it felt like it was immediately cut short by another a relapse or a setback or some other symptom that came on. And uh, going through that, you feel very isolated. You feel very alone. And uh, it's not something I think anyone should ever have to go through alone. And we realized that as we're learning a lot more about the medical side of concussions, which is great, um, there wasn't a lot of resources out there for the emotional side for athletes going through these types of things because um, concussions are, are, what are what are known as invisible injuries most of the time. Um, there's no visible signs of trauma when you're hanging out with your friends or your family or, or coaches. Um, to the outward observer, you just look normal, but inside you're not. And it's really tough to deal with because sometimes um, your support system, your support group doesn't really know how to treat you, to treat you differently, or they don't really see that you can't do the same things. You're limited. Um, with what you can do. Maybe your friends want to go out and see a movie and you would really love to do that, but you can't because sitting in a movie theater with the noise and the lights really um, brings on your symptoms. Um, and through all of this, it's really easy to feel very, very closed off and um, you just feel so alone and, and it kind of drives this, this spiral where you go deeper and deeper. And you know, my story isn't, isn't common. 24 months is not what most people should expect, but. Um, I think that was partially caused by, you know, many of you said I had uh, between eight and 12 concussions, I estimate, but only two of them I actually treated properly, I actually took time off. Um, so if we, you know, learn, we educate ourselves as coaches and administrators and as parents, you know, we can help our athletes from making the same mistakes I did at a younger age and also be able to notice the signs and, you know, if your, one of your students takes a fall and you know, they don't say anything, but you notice they're acting a little differently. Um, maybe they're just a little slower, a little groggy. You can notice these signs, and you know, some of the you know, experts can go into detail about things to look for, but you know, it's just important to know that um, there's the medical side of things, but there's also the very personal human aspect. And um, there's, there's now resources we're building for athletes going through um, to have support, to know that they're not alone. And it's very important that you engage with them as parents, as coaches, um, you know, as friends. You don't associate with someone dealing with it. That you know, you talk to them. Don't let them put themselves into a shell and in a cocoon, because um, that'll just make the problem worse. So well, that's, what um, I was asking if you to that's basically more what I have to say about it. I'm just here to shine a light on the, the emotional side of things, and because it's a very human, um, personal injury that takes its toll in a psychological way and a mental way a lot differently. And in some ways, in other injuries. So, um, thank you.